Welcome everybody to this program. I'm here with Ed Dowd today and Ed, it's great to have you here with us. For those that don't know you, Ed, would you just give us a little brief background? Sure, I'll just go through the two, three minute bio. Uh, born and raised in Boston, Massachusetts. I uh, went to University of Notre Dame for college. After college, I went to uh, a bank called HSBC, where I became an institutional fixed income salesperson at a very young age in Chicago. And my job there was to sell uh, fixed income instruments, uh, credit market instruments to insurance companies, banks, uh, buy side companies, anybody who wanted to buy bonds. I learned about credit markets, foreign exchange, interest rates, economic policies, how the world works and the plumbing of the financial system for those five years. Um, in those early five years, I saw fraud. So, you know, Wall Street uh, is boom, bust, and fraud. That's the cycle. Boom, bust, and then a fraud gets exposed. The fraud I was exposed to were a couple in uh, the, the years between 1990 and 95. There was the Orange County uh, pension fund scandal where uh, that gentleman was buying a bunch of bonds he didn't understand to juice the yield for his pension fund, and then it blew up and they lost a lot of money. Also at that time, uh, Jeff Jett, a trader at Kidder Peabody, uh, hid some trades in his drawer. He was a bond trader and the company blew up because of that. So I saw I saw what, what, what nefarious things could do on Wall Street and uh, went back to business school, got my MBA from Indiana University between 95 and 97. Wanted to get into the uh, the equity side of the of the uh, finance world, and so I did that. After uh, business school, I went to Donaldson Lufkin and Genren in New York City, which was an investment bank, and I was introduced uh, to uh, another cycle of fraud. I was uh, an, an electric utility analyst, uh, which is boring widows and orphan stocks, but down the hall were the internet internet fellows. And this is right before the dot-com boom really took off. And I saw um, those guys making millions of dollars issuing companies that ended up going to zero uh, after I left Donaldson, Lufkin, and Jen Red. And what, what, the fraud there was something called due diligence fraud. Investment banks were making a ton of money from the fees associated with issuing these companies. They used to make sure that companies had, you know, uh, funny little things called revenues and cash flows. Back in that day, there were companies that were being measured on eyeballs and they were pre-revenue. So we all kind of knew how that would end. I went from there up back up to Boston to my hometown and uh, joined a firm called Independence Investments where I became a technology analyst. And because of my, you know, just my general uh, suspicious nature of, of, of things, all things, and being a student of history, I looked at the dot-com boom and I said, this sounds very eerily familiar to other booms and busts in the 1929 crash, what have you. And I uh, was able to steer my firm uh, uh, away from some of the frauds like Enron, WorldCom, and Lucent. And uh, I, that's when I noticed that uh, CEOs and CFOs will lie their uh, faces off all the way until they're in handcuffs. So I saw that bust. And then I went to BlackRock in 2002 to become a portfolio manager after making successful calls at my other firm. And uh, for 10 years, I managed to grow a, a, a large cap growth equity fund from 2 billion to 14 billion. And that's when I saw the uh, housing fraud unfold. And each of these frauds has a different reframe. In the, um, in, in the late 90s, it was, uh, this, it's a new paradigm. In the housing crisis, it was home prices never go down. So let's fast forward. I, I left BlackRock after about 10 years, uh, and it was it was a decision of mine to leave to kind of recuperate from uh, what was then just mild anxiety and depression. Unfortunately, I uh, made the mistake of uh, going to a psychiatrist who got me on uh, SSS, SSRIs, antidepressants. They made me clinically depressed, and I was able to recover myself through uh, a gentleman who approached me and told me that these things don't work. They've never been proven to work. He was a psychiatrist. So I got off all those drugs, got physically fit, changed my diet, and became very spiritual and uh, gave over all my anxieties and worries to God. So I've been cured of depression ever since. Uh, my eyes have been opened and I see things clearly. And, you know, I was um, I moved to Maui in 2014 uh, with my uh, now ex-wife. She started a business. I started working for a firm. Uh, here on Maui. Uh, then eventually I left that firm. She continued her business. And then uh, I became entrepreneurial and 
And uh, but then COVID hit and I was immediately suspicious because I'd seen uh, the telltale signs of, of fraud before, except this time it was fraud in, on the medical sphere and it was uh, the refrain was safe and effective. And a couple of things stood out to me very early on. One that um, in 2020, it seemed that nothing made sense. Uh, science was thrown out the uh, window. Uh, I saw doctors being demonized for um, uh, pointing out things that contradicted the narrative and they were uh, maligned and censored. And I said to myself, being a, a, someone, a student of someone who wants to get information that no one else has, if it's being censored, I want to see what it is. And sure enough, I saw Dr. Malone's uh, famous podcast on the Dark Horse podcast where he and Steve Kirsch and uh, Brett Weinstein talked about potentially the spike protein uh, in the vaccine causing issues. And uh, I uh, had been hearing uh, when the vaccine rollout occurred that there were all sorts of anecdotes in my friend group of people being injured. And I know a couple of things about vaccine safety from my Wall Street days. It takes seven to 10 years for a normal vaccine to be tested. And uh, I also knew this was approved under emergency youth authorization that the clinical trial was only 28 days. And this new novel technology, uh, which had never been tested on humans, uh, what, you know, was approved or uh, approved under EUA. It still hasn't officially been proved, by the way. It's still under an EUA. That's something people should keep in mind when we're talking about the, uh, the mRNA technologies. They've never officially been proved, approved yet. Um, so that's, that's interesting to note. And I uh, became very uh, irate with the mandates here on Maui. They were very draconian. I did not get the vax. Unfortunately, I couldn't convince many of my family members to do so. So a lot of my family members and friends took the initial dose. Uh, most of them seemed to be fine. Um, and then I started to uh, hook up with Dr. Malone. He came to Maui and I told him, that, you know, because of my finance background, I had a thesis that these vaccines were causing harms because of the anecdotal evidence. And I said, OK, if I, my thesis is correct, it'll show up in insurance company results and funeral home results initially. And it did. And then we started, uh, I, I formed a team with some gentlemen in Portugal in around June of 2022. Uh, and we started investigating government databases, all cause mortality and calculating excess deaths. Um, and then we looked at disability data. I wrote a book uh, that I published at the end of 2022 called Cause Unknown, the Epidemic of Sudden Death in 21 and 22. And as we were, as we are now sit here in 2024, uh, you know, the thing you need to understand is that excess mortality across the Western globe is still up. It's coming down a bit, which is good news because booster uptake is way down. But uh, unfortunately, uh, it's been a disaster. The response, the COVID response with the lockdowns, the, uh, the, the, the prevention of early treatment to make way for the vaccine, and then the vaccine rollout has, has caused excessive mortality, especially amongst young working age folks, disabilities, and it's going to be something we're going to be talking about the next 100 years because, unfortunately, although most people I think are going to be fine, there was about, you know, 20 to 30 percent that have either been injured, disabled, or have died. And the, the worry I have is the injured turn into disabled and the disabled turn into dead. That's where we are right now. And just to give you an update on Australia, we've got my team at Finance Technology, spelled with a PH. You can go to our website. We have Australia, all cause mortality broken down by age groups and whatnot. And uh, for Australia, the total population, your your excess mortality was actually down in 2020, about, about uh, 2%. Then it went up to about 4% in 2021, and then up to 16, uh, 14% in 2022. It's hovering around 10 now. But you know, I believe it's the vaccines, but if it isn't, you have to ask yourself, why is the excess mortality in Australia up after all these measures taken by the government and the authorities? And at the very least, they should all be fired and an investigation needs to be launched because this is a crime of negligence and, and, and malfeasance because it's a cover up at this point. It's, 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 a, it's a global cover up. Now, you've just mentioned the word a global cover up. How do we get to the place of a global deception in the first place. Well, you know, let's harken back to 2020. Uh, you know, uh, what I found interesting was the the messages from all of the Western nations, and and the wording and the phrasing was all the same. And I've never seen global governments ever agree on any one thing. So there seemed to be this um, 
uh, uh, for the first time ever, unity, a unified message. And uh, that for me was very scary. And so it seemed to me that something else was at play. And I think, and I can't prove this, but my, my running thesis is this all has to do with the financial uh, debt bubble that's been blown since the great financial crisis in 2009. And that uh, um, COVID was used as an excuse to uh, print more money by the Federal Reserve, to prop up the system that was, was on the precipice of failing in 2019. And also to imp implement control measures and, and 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 compliance measures to usher in what's what, what, what they're calling themselves the Great Reset. Ed, um, explain to me what you mean by cover up. How did we go from where they were at to now? You're you're saying there's a cover up, a worldwide cover up. Well, the reason why there's a cover up is because you have to remember 2020. I don't know how what it was like in Australia because I wasn't there, but in the U.S., we every day our news uh, organizations had a ticker tape of cases and debt to scare the bejesus out of all of us. Then 2021 rolls around and they, they roll out the vaccine. They still did that. But now that they've officially ended the pandemic in early 2023, what they're failing to talk about is the excess deaths that are continuing, the disabilities that are continuing, the fact that young people died in waves and droves in the US and across Europe and in uh, Australia after 2020. So there was a mix shift of a very old to, to young in 21, 22, and 23, it continues. And so we have disabilities, injuries, and uh, and deaths, and we have cardiac issues on, on the rise, we have cancers on the rise. Uh, we've analyzed the UK database, their uh, personal independence payment system, which is the disability pension system, very good data. Uh, since uh, 2021, um, claims uh, have gone up. Uh, since 2020, uh, claims have gone up 70% across the board for every body system and every cause, and it's just it's it's atrocious. So the data that I'm that we we've discovered that's on our website is available for all to see, and if we see it, the global governments and healthcare authorities see that as well. And if they don't, they're lying to you. So at this, and the fact that you're not hearing about this in the mainstream media or from your, your government authorities is because they know they made a mistake and they're covering it up because these numbers aren't undeniable. Just to give you an idea, in the US, disability was running around 30 million pre-COVID. Uh, it actually went down a little bit during COVID in 2020. Then in February of 2021, it took off and rose uh, to 33.2 million. We added 3.2 million disabled people in 18 months into September 2022. And this is after a long, steady, you know, sideways movement. And half of those newly disabled were employed, half. So, and then uh, I was optimistic that the worst of it was behind us. The disability uh, number in the US kind of went sideways, but then in June of uh, last year, it jumped another million. So now we're at 4.2 million in the U.S. Half employed, so about 2 million, and and that and it's and it's and it's consolidating again. My fear is, you know, it's going to jump up again, and uh, so these number and we have we have also analyzed absence data and work time loss data. It's shot up in 21, and then especially in 22. So we have what we call three buckets: the injured, which re represent people who are chronically sick, the disabled who can't work or need medical attention or some sort of help, and then the dead. And uh, we did a vaccine damage report with, in the U.S. and we took a stab at the numbers as of 2022. It was 300,000 dead in the U.S. from the vaccine, about 1.36 million disabled, and about 26.6 million injured. So those numbers are conservative, and we, we didn't want to be bombastic. They're probably higher. Ed, you're a financial analyst. When you're looking at numbers like that and, and, and an increase in a particular um, or a, a variation in a particular set of numbers, what what do you call something you would have taken notice of and then something you call a black swan event? Yeah, so so when you're analyzing trends uh, uh, and, 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 and demographics and death rates are very steady, they're not, they don't jump around. Birth rates jump around, so they're harder to analyze because there's there's exogenous events that cause birth rates to shoot up or shoot down. But death rates are pretty steady. That's why insurance companies have a business. They make a ton of money doing this. This is not rocket science, and death rates are very steady. 
you have to make adjustments that we did in our work for population growth or population decline. So Australia has a growing population due to immigration. So we make population adjustments to make sure we get the excess deaths correct. Um, and excess, uh, uh, um, there's something, you know, when, when, it, when, it, when it jumps from trend, there's a trend line, steady. And it's, either, it's either, so excess deaths are either going down over time or, or de all deaths are either going down over time or up over time, depending upon what country you're in. In 2021 and 2022, they jumped dramatically. And so we try to figure out what does that mathematically mean, that deviation from trend? How many standard deviations from normal is that? You know, how, what's, the, what's the percent chance that happens? So three standard deviations is a, a 0.3% chance it happens from, from the average, either to the negative or to the positive. So that's anything above a three is a, what we call in finance or science a signal. So that we, we see three, four, five, six, 10, 17 standard deviation events all over the place. You name it, excess deaths, uh, disabilities, and uh, lost work time. And then cancers amongst young people and heart attacks amongst young people. We're looking at 16 standard deviation events. So it's a signal. It's all it is. Uh, it's all you can say. Something's changed and something is very off. And to give you an idea like what a black swan event is, a 3.8 standard deviation event is the chance of you listening to me getting hit by lightning once in your lifetime. So and unless you think you're going to get hit by lightning, it doesn't happen very often. So literally, it's like lightning striking. Um, a five standard deviation event is the probability of you and your wife giving birth to a seven foot giant. And then a 10 standard deviation event is the probability of you giving birth to a nine foot giant. Uh, I believe Thanos from the Marvel uh, movies was nine feet. and He's the one that made half the people disappear. Um, so I, I know it's morbid, but you got to have some humor in, some, in this at, at some point. Um, so the point is, these are rare events, they're signals. So we have signals popping off all over the place in excess death, disability, lost work time, and uh, no one wants to talk about it. That's why it's a cover-up. The cover-up is they don't want to talk about it because if it wasn't the vaccine, they would be talking about it because wouldn't you want to create fear to, to get to more for more government spending unless you made a big, 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 uh, mistake before, and that's why they're not talking. They don't want to point out this this mistake because if they do, they know eventually we'll have to look at it. So they want to pretend it's not going on. The gaslighting in the U.S. is like I've never seen before. Um, I was fact checked in 2022. I, I pointed out that millennials died excessively between uh, March of 21 and Feb of 22 in the U.S. 60,000 millennials died excessively. That's a Vietnam War for us. 58,000 people. AP and Reuters fact checked me. They said that it was a lie and did not happen. Fast forward, the numbers are getting so big. They say, well, it happened, but it's due to everything but the vaccine. They don't mention the vaccine. They mention over drug overdoses, suicides, um, missed cancer screening treatment uh, appointments, you name it. It's anything but the vaccine. Well, um, Doc, on your, one of your streams I read this morning, um, I think was it Dr. McCullough talked about the number of people that didn't take the vaccines in America. Yeah. Uh, the number of people that were injured by the vaccines, there were three or four numbers there, and he said they all vote. Yeah. We're about to see something amazing happening in America. What's unfolding? So the math he, he gives is good. And so, there, so there's the reality on the ground. Let, let's talk about the good news. Booster uptake in the U.S. is 6%. CEO of Moderna just came out and said, basically, no one wants their product. So word of mouth is spreading. No one wants these products anymore. So the reality on the ground is um, there's more of us than we are led to believe. There's more people that are very angry and becoming increasingly angry about how they were lied to. And in the U.S., Dr. McCullough is right. So there's 25 percent of the folks who didn't get the vaccine, both on the blue team and the red team. And you got to remember, if you go back, the people that didn't get it were either they, they some of them were fired, some of them were uh, ostracized by their friends and loved ones. So in those people, Australia. yeah, no one's ever going to forget. If, if you're one of the 25 percent, this is the big single biggest issue of your life. And people remember that. Then we have some new converts, people who are injured. 
they come on board. And there's about 18% of the uh, um, country, uh, Dr. McCullough said that, that's what he's seeing. That's about what we're, we think about 18% of the US was injured. Uh, so you add 18 plus 25, it's around 40%. And there you go. That's a, that's th those people are going to vote. And the, the, the only candidate who's talking about um, the vaccine, the COVID vaccine and the, the abysmal COVID policies is Bobby Kennedy. He's running as an independent. He has to get on the ballot. Trump is not talking about it. It doesn't want to talk about it. He he's still claiming he sold, uh, saved 100 million lives. And then Biden, of course, mandated it and still is, you know, towing the line. So there could be a, a very interesting election season. And I'm hoping, uh, if, you know, if, if, if that happens the way I think it, it will, it'll spread globally. And so you'll get some traction in Australia. Um, the, the conversation will have to be had in Australia because Bobby Kennedy will be talking about it. And he'll be the president of the United States. So there's a lot of hope. Um, but the, the key to remember is there's more of you than you think there are. There really are. Oh, I'm learning that every day here, uh, that there's more of me than I think there are. And they are very grateful to people like yourself who are spreading the message. But you're, you are doing it in a way that I can't. You're doing it with expertise and that ability to reach right down into the numbers in the UK, in the US, and even now in Australia. So we greatly appreciate the work that you and your team are doing. And uh, yes, it will. Now, in America, there's only 60% of people vote, whereas we have compulsory voting here. Um, I wish we had that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's very important. People have criticised me for, for my support for not for compulsory voting, but it means everybody has to have their say. Whereas if you have 40% of people in your country that, that are going to vote in a certain way because of either their injury or, or their being set, set aside because they didn't take the vaccine, <clears throat> and you only have 60% of people voting. Yeah. The math, and, and these forty percent are going to make themselves vote. They're they're, they're not happy. So the forty percent you mentioned is more motivated than, than the other sixty percent. Do you think they will become a type of coalition behind uh, Bobby Kennedy? I certainly hope so. Um, you know, uh, the problem we have in this country right now is, is we're very divided. Uh, the media seem to be captured by the intelligence agencies in the military industrial complex. I mean, it's the gaslighting, the economic gaslighting, the gaslighting we see. I've never seen it before. It, you know, it's, it's, it's lies and propaganda. We have propagandists as journalists, not really journalists anymore. The fourth estate in the U.S. is dead. Uh, so it, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. Unfortunately, we're also economically uh, kind of seeing uh, the economy. Uh, the economic numbers reported are kind of being fudged by the U.S. government, meaning, yes, we had 4% GDP growth in the third quarter, but that was primarily due to government spending. Without the government spending, it would have been a, a minus 1% quarter in the real economy. So we have this, we have this fake economy, fake jobs reports. They keep revising the job numbers down. There's also a miscounting of our labor pool due to the disabilities and the deaths. You know, I put I put a tweet out today talking about that. The Federal Reserve said, oh, we'd like to see some weakness in the labor markets before we cut interest rates. Well, the reason they don't see it is because the labor pool, which is the de denominator, is smaller than they think it is. So it biases the unemployment rate lower. So there's this impression that things are good when they're not good. Right. Two, two things before we go. One is uh, the banks. What's happening with the banks? And the second one is what's happening in Paris and Germany or Paris and you know, across Europe with the farmers? So, yeah. So, so I, I, I think, you know, for the Australian viewers in the U.S., there's been a blackout on two uh, very interesting issues. The European farmer protests. There's a blackout here. They do not talk about them. They don't mention them. They don't exist as far as they're concerned because they don't want anybody in the U.S. getting similar ideas. Um, also, there's been a blackout in the U.S. of uh, Governor Abbott standing up to the uh, Biden administration and refusing to remove uh, the uh, razor wire at the border. And uh, about, I think about 25 other states have joined him and, and are supporting him. So 
that also is an, is an issue that's being blacked out in our media. So there's a lot of things that um, are going on that are good. The, the regimes, uh, I believe intelligence agencies are behind us. You guys remember Five Eyes. And uh, I think I think I think you know there's a there's a lot of weirdness going on there, and, and this seemed to be a military psyop that was the, the vaccine propaganda was a military psyop that's come out. A lot of the the uh, messaging was uh, was uh, researched uh, in 2020 before they they employed it on all of us. So there's this power structure, permanent state, bureaucratic state in the U.S. and globally that's trying to hold on to the reins of power. And uh, the banking problem is going to start to, uh, we just had a bank today uh, drop 40%, uh, a regional bank, New York City Community Bank, dropped 40%. Expectations, they were going to lose 50 million. They lost 550 million and cut their dividend. The Federal Reserve, you got to go back to March of last year. In the U.S., we had these ginormous bank failures out of nowhere, Silicon Valley Bank and Republic Bank in New York and, and a couple other banks. The Federal Reserve instituted what was called the Bank Term Funding Program. That was a stopgap measure to prevent the banks and run, run on, to prevent bank failures and, and a run on the, 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 the deposits. The problem was the bank, the Federal Reserve Bank started to take on losses and has lost about $100 billion since they instituted that program. They're ending the program on March 11th of this year. So I suspect regional bank failures in the U.S. to continue. I expect that those to be consolidated into you know six or seven banks in the U.S. eventually, much like it is in Australia and uh, Canada. You don't you don't have a lot of local banks, I don't believe. Um, so that's where we're going. I think the economy in the U.S. They're trying to hold it. There's an election year, so they're doing everything they can to prop this thing up before the election. I think they're not going to be able to do it. I think we're going to see full blown financial panic anywhere between now and somewhere towards the end of 24. Ed Dad, it's been amazing again. Absolutely amazing. Thank you and God bless you for the work that you do. And we look forward to speaking with you again uh, whenever you're available. Uh, we're watching closely what you're doing. I'm telling every one of my friends to get onto Ed Dad, uh, particularly um, on, on the platforms that you're on. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you, and look forward to seeing you again. Uh, my pleasure. Let me tell everybody where I can be found. I'm on Twitter or X. I think they call it X now. Uh, at at Dowd Edward, D-O-W-D Edward on Getter, at Edward Dowd. And then all of our vaccine research is available for, for free on financetechnologies.com under the Humanity Projects tab. Go to Projects. We have the most extensive research on the vaccine issue. And if you want to try to convince someone, a loved one, to uh, come over to your site, show them that website, buy my book, give them the book. That's that's what you can do to convince and change your mind. Thank you. Uh, I watch you on Telegram as well. So, Ed, thank you so much for being on today. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.